Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you eight tools that are going to further enhance your experience while using Linux Mint. These tools range from performance overlays to mice and keyboard applications and a few management devices for your system. You'll see what I mean when we get there. But let's kick off the first of the eight with this one. So we will be using a custom version of Proton. Let me take you over to Valve's GitHub page where they explain the different versions that are already within Steam. Here we have Proton Stable, Experimental, Hotfix, and Bleeding Edge. Stable is just a default version. This is the default flavor of Proton that carries version numbers next to it. It's released after extensive Q&A testing and public release candidate phase. Now, as we can see, Experimental is the flavor intended for public testing of experimental features. The games that are working with Proton Experimental, as listed in the change logs, are tested for regression prior to the release. Hotfix, on the other hand, is a special version of Proton that contains targeted fixes for new, important games. It's used when there's no time to do a proper stable or experimental release. It's intended to be short-lived and be phased out once the fix matures and is released as part of one of the other flavors. And Proton Bleeding Edge, this is the automated and untested release of Proton that happens on the experimental branch. It automatically updates to the latest development in DXVK, VKD3D Proton, DXVK NVAPI, and Proton's Wine. It does note, however, it can eat your game prefixes and saves. Use it at your own risk. So again, Proton is basically gathering all the necessary features needed to help Wine run these games under Linux. There are also custom versions of Proton available as well, namely Proton GE, which is amongst one of the more popular ones. Now you may ask, what is Proton GE? According to Steam Deck HQ, here we have Proton GE is a custom version of Proton that takes all the enhancements made from the newest version of Proton and its experimental versions, but adds in custom patches that either cannot be or haven't been added to the official releases of Proton yet. This custom version is maintained by Glorious Agro, which is what GE stands for, who updates it himself. Now, these packages usually have codecs that cannot be shipped with Steam's version of Proton due to licensing or other reasons. If you open up the software manager and type the word Proton, you're greeted with two applications here that can download these for you, Proton Up QT and Proton Plus. I prefer Proton Plus, so let's go ahead and install this. It has a prerequisite package as it needs. It's letting you know what it's installing. And once it's done installing, when we open up the program, it's going to let us know which applications are installed on the left hand side and which versions of custom protons we can obtain on the right hand side. It automatically detected that we have Steam installed and Proton GE is at the top of the list with many other different versions of Proton to help you tinker and have older games or different types of games run on your Steam. We're going to go ahead and get the latest version, which is Proton GE 9-22. Now, once it's downloaded, if you have Steam open, you may want to close Steam so that it can refresh in the compatibility list for Steam. Once we reset Steam, we can go to the compatibility menu and select our new Proton from there. You can either have it run globally or you can do it on a per game basis. Now, if you ever used MSI Afterburner on Windows for the Reba Tutor statistics server to monitor your in-game performance, we have something very similar to that in Linux as well. It is called Mango HUD, and this program can be simply installed from the command line. And then we have a second application that is a graphical user interface that will help us configure Mango HUD. So first, let's open up our command line and let's type sudo apt install Mango HUD. You'll type in your password, hit yes to the prompt, and Mango HUD will be installed. Now the next step is we're gonna go to this GitHub for Goverlay. Goverlay will be the application that we will use so that we can customize our Mango HUD. Now, before we install it, it actually has a prerequisite here for any Ubuntu based systems and Linux Mint being one of them. We need to manually install one dependency for this. What we want to do is update our system with sudo app get update or sudo apt update. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run this next line. We're not going to copy this whole box. We're only going to copy the second line on the box. What this is going to do is it's going to download a .deb file. This is very similar to a .exe file. If you're familiar with Windows, it's located in our home folder. 
what we'll do is locate the file in our home folder. This is where it was downloaded to. Instead of running the following command on this list, which would automatically install the application through the command line, what we'll do is we'll use Linux Mint built-in Debian package installer. There's a reason we're gonna do this, is because it will resolve dependency issues with this package. So we'll go ahead and install the package and it lets you know what it's gonna install. Installation was successful. The next step is we'll just get rid of this dev package. Head on over to our downloads where we're going to go ahead up to the releases page on the GitHub and we're going to download the tar file. Extract it once it's downloaded. And get rid of the tar file as we clean up as we go. Then just double click on the executable. We can close out any other items that we have on the screen. And as you can see, we just have this interface here that allows us to customize our monitoring tool. I went ahead and just clicked on basic from the main menu. Under metrics, you can rename your GPU and CPU so that you know what you're monitoring. And you can also choose many different levels of what you want monitored. Very similar to if you ever used Riva Tutor Statistics Server. Now, since the basic level of Monitoring is sufficient. I'll show you this in action so that you can see and change whatever you like in the future. So as you can see, we're running Marvel Rivals. I'm just running a replay in the background here so that it's less disruptive on the actual games. But as you can see, we have it on our top left of our screen. If you're in game and you want to move this position around, what you can do is hold shift and hit F11 and it'll toggle the position of Mango Hut. I have it on the left hand side now so you can see all the full system stats. But this application did not install it, it was just something that we could just run. Uh, we can actually add this to our start menu. Uh, you will highlight the item, you will right click, and then you can create a shortcut. This way you're able to find it through your start menu. As you can see, I'm going through all applications and there it is. So you can click it and find it easy. Ideally, you would want to place this in a folder where you would store applications like this and then do this. But I'm showing you now so that you can know how to do this for the future. So now that we went ahead and installed Mango HUD and configured it with Goverlay, we need to get it into our game. So we'll go over here, we'll right click, hit properties. And in your launch options, just type in Mango HUD. Now, since this was also installed along with Steam, we could also do Game mode run. Game mode is a daemon that runs in the background that is said to help with performance in game. So we can do these two options. Go here and then type in percentage sign, command, percentage sign. When we launch the game, the game will launch with Mango HUD. A very useful tool, and it could be a must have, is Piper. Piper is a mouse utility. Basically, this program lets you change your DPI, assign keys to buttons, and control your LEDs, all from one software. So from our software manager, we'll type in Piper. You'll see this first one on the top left. We'll go ahead and install it. Once installed, we could go ahead and launch it. Now with this launched, typically there would be a picture of your mouse on the left hand side. However, it doesn't seem to have a picture from my glorious Model D. And as we look around the application, the first screen we're shown, we could change our polling rate and we could change our DPI. The second screen will allow us to map our keys to the buttons on the mouse. The third screen will let you change your LEDs. I'll click here. It gives me the option to pick a color. Not only can I pick colors, I could pick whether it's a solid, cycle, or breathing, or we could just go ahead and turn it off completely. You choose whatever you like and hit apply when you're done. For those of you using Razer peripherals, Open Razer is gonna be the way to go. It is said here that Open Razer has functionality for over 201 Razer products. This goes from keyboards to mice to headsets. Now Open Razer should be uh, pretty straightforward to install. 
we'll go to their download page and it'll let us know as soon as we click on Ubuntu Linux Mint, basically the Ubuntu derivatives, it'll let us know that this is already integrated within Linux Mint. If you have a newer version of one of those peripherals, you may want to add the latest PPA, which is an extra repository to your software manager. To use this, simply type in your terminal, sudo apt install open razor dash meta. This can also be found from the software manager. You can highlight open razor meta and it'll install everything it needs. And you also have two companion applications that you can install along with this. The first one being Razor Genie and the second one being Polychromatic. Razor Genie is the one that is most recommended to install along with this so you can adjust the functionality of your peripherals. CKB Next is a driver for Corsair keyboards and mice. It also has functionality for certain headphones as well. And according to their GitHub, it says this project is currently a work in progress, but it already supports much of the same functionality, including full RGB animations and more features are coming soon. And this one is also available directly from our software manager. Just type in the search box CKB and CKB next will show up. You click on it and we have here the option to install it. So these three applications should already cover a wide variety of mice, keyboards and headsets. If you have anything that's different than the ones shown here, a quick Google search will help you find exactly what you need because I'm sure someone out there has worked on software for it. Another important application we should have in our system is this one called Gear Lever. Gear Lever lets us manage app images. And what are app images? Well, these are all-in-one application packages. They basically run like a portable application on Windows. And the reason we're going to use this application is because many apps actually are provided in this format. So go ahead and install that. And once installing any flat pack, you just want to go ahead and launch it. From here, you can configure it, though I like the defaults out of the box. So we're not going to do too much here. So with gear lever installed, let's go ahead and get ourselves an app image. And the first one that I can think of is one that's going to be very helpful for a lot of you out there. And this is open RGB. This will control RGB light sources from all over on your Linux desktop. As you can see, they say it's a lightweight user interface and they eliminate the bloatware, the need for multiple different applications for controlling your RGB. This is a cross-platform application, so this is especially useful on Windows. But today we're going to be using it on Linux. As we scroll down to the bottom to the download area, we see that they have a Linux app image, 64-bit. Go ahead and download that. Now, once you have it downloaded, you want to right-click on your app image and open it with gear lever. You want to unlock it. And we can move it to the app menu. Go ahead and launch it. And we have a warning here because we need to do one more thing so that OpenRGB can work flawlessly on our system. We'll click this link and we'll download their script. Now, once downloaded, you want to right click on the application and go to properties, go to permissions, and allow executing file as a program. We'll close this, then we'll open the terminal we'll run it from here. We'll do dot slash, and then you type in or copy everything here. Paste it in, hit enter, type in your password, and we're done. Click OK. We can close the application and then go ahead and find it again from our software list. Type in open. Enter, and as you can see, reading my motherboard and it's reading my mouse. OpenRGB is now set up as an app image on your system. And we're gonna do a lot more of app images in a future video as well. All right, so there you have it, everyone. Eight applications that are a must to install on Linux Mint. Hope you find everything in this video to be very helpful in setting up gaming to be your way as you have before on Windows. If you like this video, don't forget, give it a like, subscribe for more videos like this. Let me know in the comments down below which applications you're using on your Linux Mint that I didn't cover here today. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.